Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 562, recorded Wednesday, March 21st, 2018, where democracy dies. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Home plays a big role in your life. That's why Quicken Loans created Rocket Mortgage. It lets you apply simply and understand the entire mortgage process fully so you can be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. Get started at rocketmortgage.com slash windows. And by IT Pro TV, binge worthy learning for IT professionals. Visit itpro.tv slash ww and use the code ww30 to get a free seven day trial and 30% off a monthly membership for the lifetime of your active subscription. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we get covered in snow <laughs> and we make snow angels here uh, from the Northeast. We've got Paul Thorat. He is uh, in Lower Mukunji Valley, where the snow is piling up. He's also from Thorat.com, where there's it's a no snow zone. And uh, <laughs> also, Mary Jo Foley from All About Microsoft.com. She's in New York City, where the snow seems not to never to stick. It's the Teflon City, the city that never sleeps. <laughs> city of broad shoulders on no, the Chicago. It's that super fun site that your city is sitting on that's keeping everything warm. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> it's the nuclear piles yeah. underneath there where the Manhattan yeah. Project yeah. Left, their, <laughs> left their rods. So, uh, so you're having snow. Both of you are having snow right now, yeah? Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Big snow. In fact, you should go. I, I posted a picture on Twitter. Um, of the FedEx guy showing up to my house it. in a miracle I can't of he made it to your house. modern delivery. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't. I said he rain or we sleep. we shared a joke about that when he when he came to or the door. Slow but snow, snow, <laughs> or dark of night. Yeah, yeah. They, I couldn't believe they showed up today. Keep this. Wow. Oh, you have a Qualcomm uh, computer too. Oh, sure. I didn't know you got one of those. I thought you weren't going to get one of those. There it is. Oh, There's the picture out your window. Does he have chains? Wow. Uh, I bet he must. I, it, it, I wouldn't go out there if you paid me. Yeah, because it's, I mean, do they not plow your neighborhood? <laughs> <laughs> it, I don't know if the term boonies even <laughs> begins to explain where you I live. You really but can't tell where the street ends and the yard begins. I mean, it's. I know, everyone has to put little poles out. You know, please don't <laughs> drive up my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Yeah. Was it better it's in just Denham? Like or is that it... out here. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, uh, I mean, two weeks ago, I think I told you the story about how we almost died driving around in the snow here. Um, but actually, it's been worse in Boston. You know, the last storm we had, we got an inch or something, and it melted really quick. I mean, Boston got like two feet of snow. So, yeah. I have. It doesn't feel like it, but. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'm in a better place uh, from a weather perspective. <laughs> Paul's in a better place. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, we knew this day would come eventually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Well, I uh, stay warm, stay dry, um, and stay inside. Uh, <laughs> this is, what is it, the fourth nor'easter in a row? In yeah, two weeks, two yeah. weeks. <laughs> You're gonna, looks, Also, I just want to point out, calendar, it's, uh, it's spring. I was just going to say, uh, I think it's going to be a white Easter. Yeah. Yeah, it better it not be. be. I, <laughs> it's only 10 well, days know. off it, now. It is. The normal um, high uh, in my part of the world on a day like today is in the 50s. Yeah. Mm -mm. And we've only mm -mm. seen 50 degrees, I don't know, maybe a couple of times, but yeah. it's, been, it's been cold. It's been cold. Yep. My friends, we've gathered together here today to talk about the Windows 10 controversy of the week. <laughs> yes. I think Windows 10 is what's causing the snow. And here's my theory. Yes. It is. <laughs> that and blockchain. It's all due to blockchain. Grab the popcorn, folks. This is a long yeah. story. <laughs> you wrote about this. I think it was on your premium uh, page, however. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? I, so, okay. I, I, I think it's fair to say. In fact, I have an excellent series of uh, tweets that I uh, took for that story. Um, my initial Wait, reaction to this was stop, negative. Stop. Stop. Yes. Let's, oh, sorry. let's explain it for people who don't know what we're talking about. Okay. May I? 
May I give sure. a quick synopsis? Yes, Mary Jo, go right ahead. I think it's a very good <laughs> Thank idea. you. Thank you, Brad Fireman. <laughs> um, Friday, build 17623 of Redstone 5 came out. Had a bunch of new features in it. None of them were really like barn burners. You get down, you go, reading through the release notes, get down to the end where it says a few other little things we did. One of them is we're now testing a change where links that are clicked on inside the Windows Mail app will open in Microsoft Edge regardless of which browser a user has set so as their default. So annoying. That's so annoying. Does it, do they not know what default means? <laughs> Holy oh, God. they know what it means. <laughs> so that is yeah, not it, good it was kind of bad that you knew it was bad when they tried to hide it by kind of sliding it in the changes section yeah. instead of pulling it out. Um, yeah, yeah this, is what Paul's, this is what Paul is going to talk about. Yeah. What's the <laughs> well? What's I the just rationale? you know, I mean, why there, there's got to be some user experience rationale here. Yeah. No, so what they isn't. say is this: <laughs> we're doing this. Sure. We're doing this because Edge gives users the best experience in terms of battery life, security, oh, come privacy. On. Blah, blah, blah. That's, that's not, what they said in the blog post. That's <laughs> I made a choice to use a default browser yeah. that was not Edge. Exactly. Honor my freaking choice. But now Agreed. this isn't in the real Windows. <laughs> this is in the make-believe, pretend build. Windows. It's coming in the future. They're probably right. just and, seeing and what Microsoft are doing. can defend itself by saying, "Hey, we, you know, we said we were testing it. You know, the feedback was negative. We're gonna not do this." Blah 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 blah. Yeah. Except for one thing. Um, this is this is just one of a million little things like this that are happening in Windows all the time. And if anyone believes that the, you know taking this out now is going to force some kind of long term change on Microsoft, it's not. It, this is the the that slippery slope has turned into a gigantic snowball rolling down the mi mountain at 100 miles an hour. You know, my, like I uh, I, I had start, started saying, I mean, my initial reaction was very negative, and so I did something I don't normally do, which was I decided not to write about it immediately. I said I'm going to sleep on this one, and I'm going to um, <laughs> I'm going to. Uh, you know, Talk I often have that, yeah, I'll have that morning after moment where I'm like, okay, you know, I, I yeah, kind of see what I they're doing in it. it. It's okay. Yeah, that didn't happen. This oh. is way worse than my initial reaction <laughs> no. was. I, I made a joke about it the day of the event where um, this was based on an old uh, Daily Show skit back when Craig Kilborn was still on. But it's like this imaginary interview where, I, you know, I'm talking to someone from Microsoft. I'm like, I, I don't understand, you know, how given your past antitrust <laughs> experiences with product bundling, how you could so easily start doing something like this well, again. Well, this was exactly guy, what they got in trouble with for, yeah. right? But guys, and, uh, my, yep. times have changed so much. They're not going to get in any trouble for doing this. No, 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 that's not, the, that's, no, 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 that's not the point. Of course, they're not going to get in trouble. They are absolutely not going to get in trouble. No. Um, that's what makes this, that's one of the things that makes this really kind of suck, frankly, that they know they can get away with it this time. Um, yeah. There is a, a broader problem at Microsoft um, that Mary Jo and I have spoken about privately. I've talked to Brad and Mahedi about this privately and, and Raphael as well. Um, and I, I'm trying to think of an intelligent way to present this publicly, but I'll just say it like this. There, there, we're, we're tunneling to some future that serves a corporate need that isn't in the best interest of users. And they can come up with their reasons for why they're doing what they're doing but they often use data that I think is completely worthless to prove their point. And in this case, for example, what they could do is say, well, we, we did get the feedback from our Windows Insiders. And you know what, Paul? Uh, you complained about it a lot, but these guys didn't have any problem with it. And so we're <laughs> going to go ahead and put it in the product because we now have the data to support the, the outcome that we were looking for. Yeah. And um, I, I I'm think gonna we're be all curious. familiar with that. I'm curious how the feedback is going to come in on this because – Mm -hmm. Windows insiders are a mixed group, right? Like there are some big <laughs> Microsoft fans in the program who I'm sure will be like, hey, whatever you guys want, it's all good. Um, there are also <laughs> some people who are not. <laughs> well, and but the point is they users. have enough of those guys who are kind of pro Microsoft goons who can just kind of tilt this in the direction yeah. that Microsoft wants. And I, right. I, and I, 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 their reliance on things like telemetry data, and I don't just mean telemetry, but no. things yeah. like telemetry data. I right. talked about the accessibility baloney that's in the setup program a few weeks ago falls into this category. People uh, told us they like it. Yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't mean that it's right. And um, I, I, I feel like there's a lack of thinking going on here. But mm -hmm. anyway, I, I, I thought about what they're doing here and uh, I looked into it. And for example, there are, like I said, there are actually many other examples where you click on things in Edge loads regardless of what your default browser is. In fact, mm -hmm. somebody last year created a tool called the Edge Deflector 
that literally intervenes in these cases to prevent Edge from running because you set some other browser to be your uh, mm -hmm. default. When I was looking into this, I pinged Mary Jo on the weekend, which I normally don't do. I try to leave her alone on the weekends. <laughs> and uh, On St. Patrick's said, hey. Day, too. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, because I figured you wouldn't be busy. <laughs> um, I was like, hey, um, maybe I just forgot this. But I, 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 I looked at this on the Surface laptop, which is running RS5. Sorry, that's not true. It's running RS4. I looked at it on my Intel NUC over here, which I use for the book, which is running RS3. And they're both on Windows 10S. And I noticed that um, there's not even a web browser choice. You can't set, you can't set a right. default web browser. So w one of the things we've been talking about over the past you know few months is what if Google Chrome did come up with a version that was in the store? You know, even if they did... Mm -hmm you could not make your default in Windows 10 S. And this is the version of Windows that Microsoft sees as the version most people will use going forward, like S mode in Windows 10 Home or Windows 10 Pro. So I asked Mary Jo, because I, I honestly couldn't remember. I said, was this, did Windows 10 S ship this way originally, or was this added over time? Like, I don't, I don't remember this. Yeah. But, I remember uh, she, it did, because, um, yeah. when, I remember because of how I wrote my Surface laptop review, and I said, mm -hmm. You know, I haven't really been trying out Edge that much, but I don't really have a choice if I run Windows 10 S. So I've been using Edge and it's right. not as horrible as I had imagined. <laughs> so I actually, what led me to look for this interface was I went to the yeah. store because I figured there has to be some little uh, homemade browser thing in there. And I'll download one of these goofy little web browsers and I'll set it as the default. I just want to see how this works in Windows 10 S. And so I did. There are, there are two, I think. And you've never heard of either one of them. They're made by Bob. He lives in his wife's or his uh, mother's bed, you know, basement or whatever. And I, <laughs> I installed the browser and I, I ran it. And then I went to mm -hmm. settings to set it up as the default browser app. And that interface does not exist. Now, I should have known mm -hmm. that. This is, I think, has in fact been the case uh, since day one. I just forgot. I don't use Windows 10 S every day or hadn't been. Mm -hmm. So you're um, saying if you no Windows Store app will allow you to change the default browser from Edge. No, I'm saying if you're running in S mode or you're running today Windows 10 S, you cannot set a default browser at all. You, you, Edge is your default browser. Right, right. And I had mentioned in the past there are other weird limitations with Edge and S mode, uh, including the fact that you can't change your search engine, for example, which mm -hmm. is something you can do in Windows 10 Home or Pro if you're using Edge. And so if, you know, even if you ch chose Edge and you wanted to use, I don't know, Google probably, uh, you can do that today if you're running Windows 10 Home or Pro, but if you're running running Windows 10 S, you cannot. That choice mm -hmm. is just removed. And I think when you look at the, I think of it as a continuum of things that are happening. Um, it's it's not just Microsoft Edge and the importance of Microsoft Edge to the platform. Even though so few people use it to actually browse the web, 50% of what happens in Windows happens on the web. Microsoft needs that to be part of the platform. They're integrating progressive web apps for the future. Those will be edge users. Mm -hmm. You can imagine, by the way, if you're running a progressive web app and you click on a link, I don't care what your browser is, your default mm -hmm. browser, it's going to open an edge. And, yep. and it's because that thing is edge. And that's, you know, they can make that excuse, even though they could fix it. If you look at Windows uh, 10 on ARM, um, which has its own kind of special limitations around desktop apps and so forth, mm -hmm. by default running Windows 10 S. By default, not by default, by nature, those uh, apps, even if you can get them running on the desktop, will run slow. It, it's like this giant funnel. That, like it's, mm. I have this, actually, I have a recurring nightmare that is very um, <laughs> so similar to this, which is that I'm driving down the road at night. It's like one of those old-fashioned Atari video games, pole position or whatever, where the mm. highway's kind of coming at you and it's multiple lanes. And <laughs> over time, it goes down from three to two, and then it goes down from two to one, and it's dark, and you can't really see... And then that thing that goes up the horizon just comes right there and it's it just ends. And that's what that's what Windows <laughs> has become. They are pushing you wait, wait a minute. down this path. <laughs> You're saying they're taking yes. Windows is a dark path. <laughs> yes, is a nightmare in which to nowhere. To nowhere. Okay, just wanna... It's a nightmare that leads yeah. to nowhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, I I just I what I this it's funny because everyone overreacted this. You you can you can look at any tech blog, especially the Windows-oriented ones, for their reaction to this. Microsoft is forcing users to use Edge, yes. But, you know, this one issue, this one instance, like we're going to change one thing. And the Windows 10 Mail app and the next version of Windows will always go to Edge is itself not a big deal. It's one thing. Yeah. But honestly, it's it's part of a much, much bigger mm. um 
a strategy. I hate to use the word strategy, but it is a strategy. Yeah. Um, they're not getting the results they want they're from not. things like Edge, which has not been proven popular, like Windows 10S, which is not proven popular. But they see, um, they see uh, that they have to get it there. And they are literally willing to do anything they have to to make that thing happen. You know, the part about this whole thing that surprises me in, in terms of your, your reaction is, yeah. and I'm going to sound like you now, I'm going to reverse okay. roles. <laughs> okay, this will be good. <laughs> you, you're assuming Microsoft is going to do the right thing for users. Oh, like no, you're, you're not thinking, anymore, I'm not. <laughs> no, but, but, no, but, not you're, anymore. but you're thinking it? that that's their Why wouldn't goal. It? Well, no, they never do the right thing for users, do they? <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, there I, I shouldn't are, uh, say never. I shouldn't say never, but um, but there's a Darwinian not, thing that can happen here, right? In why? other words, <laughs> well, I know sometimes look, people do the right reasons, the right things for the wrong reasons, right? I mean, yeah, Microsoft yeah. may need to be prodded into doing. Are you thing, saying, right? yeah. Mary Joe, that companies don't do things for? <laughs> I know to make Shocking. customers happy. That they're Shocking. what are they optimizing for profit? Is what you're saying? Well, the I other thing, like the any other, other company. Other, the right. other way to kind of frame this is compared to mobile platforms, which is what Microsoft wants Windows to become. Yeah. The Windows Store platform, the Microsoft Store platform, the UWP platform, as we now call it, is a mobile apps platform. That's all it is. It's mm -hmm. technically not very different from what iOS has, what Android has. Android, I've often said, is the modern Windows. And it's like Windows in so many ways. I mean, the comparison is so beautiful. It's... Mm -hmm. Google partners with other companies. You buy it on different devices from different companies. It's a Wild West kind of situation where you can sideload things and do anything you want with it. You can download apps from the web if you want. I mean, it's, 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 it is Windows. Yep. Um, Microsoft doesn't want Windows to be Windows. It doesn't want my, Windows to be Android. It wants Windows to be iOS, frankly. And yep. there's a whole Microsoft envies Apple thing that may or may not be part of this. But it is very clear that they want Windows to be a managed environment yep. that they control, that they can be parental over users and make the choices for them as much as possible yep. to ensure the security and the integrity, the reliability, the ongoing performance or whatever of that platform. And that they feel that that's more important than the things that Windows users have assumed will be the case for decades, that they will have choice, that when they make a choice, that choice will be respected that they don't have to use the Microsoft apps and services yep. that come with the thing. They can use whatever they want. That you stuff's know, all going some, away. It is. And I, I think your analysis is spot on. They are, they are trying to be Apple, not Android. And Yeah, um, yeah but even Apple doesn't do this to you. They do on iOS. I well, guess. they do yeah, on iOS, iOS, right? right? Remember, you know, with yeah. but, <laughs> Apple but is funny. Diff I'm, I mean, there's a difference between doing this on a... On a uh, Mobile device and a desktop device, right? I think. I, listen, I <laughs> that, that <laughs> uh, that's a huge thing. I that, no doubt about yeah. it. Apple has yeah. taken intermediate steps to get here too on the Mac, right? Mm -hmm. There, there's a mode that you can make in Windows 10 Pro that is very much like the case in the Mac, where you go to install an app that you downloaded from the web, and it says, "Hey, right, this thing came from the web. Are you sure you want to do this?" Right. On Windows 10 Pro, you can say yes. On Windows 10s, it just says you can't do it. Yeah. Um, on iOS, it just says you can't do it. Um, Windows 10s, and think about it. They're putting this thing on ARM. They mm -hmm. want this thing to be a mobile platform. Yeah. And I mean, it really is yeah. true. You can't change the browser default browser in, on, on iOS. Right. It's you can install a browser all you, you want. I mean, yeah. Apple yeah. is more restricted. Actually, you know what? The restriction in the Microsoft Store is exactly the same as it is on yeah. iOS. Mm -hmm. They're third-party browsers, can't, but they're Google not Google cannot bring its browser to the store without yeah. making major mm -hmm. technical concessions, which right. would include things that I think are very much like the restriction on iOS where you have to use the Safari rendering engine. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Probably for the same you know, reasons. All, all the data I really want to know and see are things we will never see, right? Like how many people actually do change the browser? How many people yeah. actually yeah. never open the mail app or only use the mail app because it's there in Windows 10 when you start it up? How many, I was just thinking about this the other day. I'm like, you know, when, when Redstone 4 ships, I would love to see like a focus group where there are people in there and say to them, what do you see that's different from the windows you're using now? And I bet right. 90% would say nothing. 
Yeah. Um, the thing is, so here's the deal. Like people like me, like we, we've kind of gone back and forth yeah. on this Windows yeah. 10S thing. What, this, this is for later in the show, but I will say that Windows 10S and Edge too, by the way, have gotten a lot better over time. And part of it is mm -hmm. just passage of time stuff. You know, there's yeah. there's more stuff available that makes these mm -hmm. things viable. It's it's nothing that Microsoft did per se, but, you know, the things improve over time and that's good. Um, but people like me, the people who... Yeah can't use Windows 10 S because they're power users, because they're gamers, because mm -hmm. they're technical people or developers or whatever it is. Um, you know, ultimately, we're, by sticking with Windows, we're the people who kind of would advocate for it, you know? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This stuff alienates people like me. Yeah. Now, I, right. I, I agree with you 100%. You know, we didn't, maybe we didn't highlight this enough last week. You and I had a kind of, a, I don't know if it was last week or two weeks ago, we were kind of uh, half joking, half not joking, arguing about Windows 10 or whatever. But, um, I, but I, what you just said, I think is is accurate and it is very true. Uh, normal people, by and large, mainstream again, speaking generally, yeah. I think a lot of them would not notice things and, and would use could use Edge and would think nothing of mm -hmm. it. They might be confused when they right click and it's really slow or whatever. But yeah, they'd be fine yeah. with it. Yeah. Um, but you know, you lose people like me. I know. I'm that's, sorry, but that's, the platform, another that's number. over. And not because I'm important personally, but no, because people but that's like another me, number. I, I want to see, you know, like, what percentage of all Windows users are power users versus not? That would be a nice statistic to know, too. Yeah. I have no I, idea. I, well, okay. So um, if you look at, like, like, when Windows Phone fell through the floor, the last people left, the diehards, yeah. are those people. <laughs> They're they those are. people. They are. Right? Yep. Um, a normal person stops using Windows Phone because the parking app they use to get into Boston every day yep. no longer works on Windows Phone. And I'm sorry, but I need this every single day. Or the banking app that they use yep. stopped working on Windows on Phone or was never made available, whatever it might be. Like that's right. a normal reaction to a situation. They, they go to the thing that everyone else is using. So mm -hmm. with Windows Phone, the last people left standing, uh, and there's still some of them left, are the, the diehards, the people who are mm -hmm. most you know enthusiastic about the platform. Yeah. Um, we're not at that point with Windows, except that no. I feel that every one of these little slaps to the face is an affront to everything that I care about with Windows. And I'm telling you that as an advocate for the people who use Windows more so than mm. Windows mm -hmm. itself, maybe, or Microsoft itself, yeah. certainly. Yeah, yeah. I feel this very personally. And mm. I, I, this is a terrible thing to say, but it is only because the alternatives are so much worse that I'm still using yeah. Windows today. Mm -hmm. I... I cannot believe the direction this thing is going in. It's a tragedy. Like, and it makes me crazy. Wow. And so it makes me because crazy. of links in the mail going to edge. I know. And so for, for no, me. No, it's not. It's, it's just not. the last That's straw. Just one one little it. thing. This I wouldn't use that. No, but for you me, you guys. <laughs> I, <laughs> but, so I, you know. I, like I always say on the show, I'm sort of a normal user, like the most yeah. representative of the three of us of somebody who just is kind of a normal user. And, so I know these things have changed, but I just change. I just adjust. I'm like, okay, now they won't let me do that. All right. Well, well. and <laughs> you know, if you don't you know use well, Microsoft's mail app, this doesn't affect you, right? It's only in Microsoft's right. mail app. Okay. Right. Okay. But remember, I, like I said, it's part of a continuum. Part of the deal here is here, you're using S mode now. That's the, that's the mode they allegedly expect everyone to be using. Right. Point me to all of the other great mail apps that are available in S mode. Like, <laughs> there are only a handful of mail apps. Most of them are crap. No, and yeah, you could use a, use, the web. use a web-based. You yeah. can use a web-based thing, absolutely, in a web browser tab. Right. Maybe someday in the store through PWAs. We'll see how that mm. uh, comes yeah. out. But as of right now... and. This is absolutely my personal Do you think this is preference? A ref like reflection browsers. on the road to PWA that maybe, you know, as we get closer to PWAs, this is all kind of hand in hand? Yeah, I think a PWA is part of that continuum. And I do think apps, that... The apps yeah. install from the web, yeah. Yeah, I, I actually... Um, I, in fact, i gotta, I got to change one of my app picks today um, that's semi-related to this. I, I, I firmly believe, I still very much believe that the... PWA is done right on Windows 10 could do a lot to obviate uh, many of the complaints that I just made. You know, mm. um, it would not bother me to run apps where I was really using Edge in the background, right? If I could use Google right. Inbox and a, it looked no, like an app, fine. if I could, yeah. I couldn't care it's less. Just an engine. Who cares what the engine yeah. is? Yeah, couldn't care yeah. less. 
it's possible this will all work out in the wash, so to speak. But the, yeah. here's my thing. Here, the reason this makes me crazy is I'm, I write this book. And I update it for every version of Windows 10. And so as I update it, what I'm going through is the previous version of some chapter about some technology, some part of Windows 10. And there are all these weird little subtle differences with every version. Yeah. <laughs> and they're almost never... Yeah. They're, they're, it, well, there are exceptions to this. But for the most part, you, you, you see these weird little changes where you're like, huh, mm -hmm. that's kind of weird. Why, why mm -hmm. would they just change that? And it's that funnel thing that I'm talking about. I see that a lot. And, I, and I, mm -hmm. as the more I update the book for this new version for RS4, and, and it's getting down to the point where I've probably updated about 70% of the book. I, there's so much of it in this version that if you were to look at Windows 10 RS4 from a high level, you would say that there is maybe one major new feature. I'm sorry, am I talking RS4? Yeah, RS4. There's one yeah. major new version uh, feature, which is um, uh, timeline. timeline. There are mm -hmm. a couple of mid-level things that are kind of cool, like uh, Fluent is more present in the system. I actually find that to be very attractive. I think that makes a nice difference from a user experience standpoint. I know Mary Jo doesn't see it at all. But, but <laughs> you see me smirking really, like, yeah. I, yeah, no, I, I, like I, I, I will trust you that they made that addition. I do not see it. Um, I don't. <laughs> but there really isn't a lot. There's not a lot of Big Bang stuff going right. on in this release. But you know what there's a lot of? The death by a thousand cuts stuff. It's all over the place. It's astonishing. Um, and I, I, it makes me, it makes me nervous because they make these change. Like you said, I don't think pe people might notice, so that might not notice. They might go into a little part of the UI or part yeah. of it with some app or whatever and, and say, oh, that's a little different. Eh, okay. You yeah. know, and they don't really know that it's one of a million things they just changed because this is the one they happen to hit. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking, like, if again, if you had, like, a focus group with a bunch of people and said, okay, here's Redstone 4, what do you think of yeah. these Fluent design changes? And, like, not expect them to know Fluent, but, like, just say, do you, do you notice anything different about the way this looks? Yeah. No, no look, I, this is, um, <laughs> I, one, I, I've not published this yet, but I, I'm doing this kind of side-by-side -side comparison of some of the UIs, yeah. and I guess it's RS4 versus RS3, and to show that um, this fluent design change, even though it's kind of haphazard and not very uh, consistent across the UI, mm -hmm. when it is present, it, it has a kind of a neat effect to it. It's um, it's a much nicer translucency or uh, I guess translucency kind of effect than we ever had with like Arrow back in the Vista or Seven mm -hmm. Days. Um, I, I it's there's a there's kind of a neat quality to it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you know, the thing is, if you've been using Windows 10 over time and you kind of upgrade every version, it's just like if you've been using iOS as you move mm -hmm. along, like it, only by going back and looking at the first version again right. with fresh eyes and looking at it side by side, you're like, wow, actually, they really changed a bunch of things here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I just have gotten used to it because it's mm -hmm. just, and I, we're going to wake up. It's like how democracy dies. You know, we're just going to wake up one day and be like, oh, we don't have any more choices in Windows 8. How did that happen? <laughs> Come on, man. And how it Come happened on, was man. they put the mail app going to Edge and back in RS4 and no one complained right. about it. Dude, dude it's been a while. <laughs> no, I mean, that's, but... that's how it happened. What? Right. The gong. <laughs> Time for the gong. Sorry. Gong. I know. I'm sorry. I listen. I, 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 okay. I deserve Each to be gone. Go to I, your own no, corner. No, I deserve that. I deserved it. I. I I don't How know democracy why. dies. Let's okay. Relax. Breathe. <laughs> Breathe. I, Breathe. No, but it is. You understand? Windows is a democracy. It is. It is. It's. A, is it? Yeah. <laughs> in the sense that we get to make our own choices and do what we want to do, and increasingly those choices are being taken away. They yeah. are. You know, you should do what I'm doing, Paul. Write your own operating system. I was going to say run Linux. <laughs> well, I, Linux oh, is no, a start. Listen. Yeah, you're right. You're writing if your you own. Want to feel better about not? Windows? If you want to feel better, I do recommend installing Linux. <laughs> that will solve your what? problems. What? <laughs> no, Linux is a democracy, and if something like this happened yeah. in in a Linux, uh, people would be up in arms, and then they would just change it. <laughs> Donald Rumsfeld's uh, democracy. <laughs> they, they, they would just change. Democracy it. is. What did he say? Complicated or dirty or what was yeah, it? Yeah, well, it's all of the above. <laughs> Well, I know. On that you know, it would be great. It would be great if they could just make these changes to to Windows 10 when it runs in a mobile on a mobile platform and not sure. other platforms. But because of the whole one Windows thing, I don't think they. Do what I really gonna... worry about the most is not no not the most, but one of the things that makes me a little sad is I know there are people out there who will embrace this limitation of their choices and say that yeah. I trust Microsoft to do the right thing and I just. I'm on board. 
I'm not even going to question <laughs> the fact that they're taking things away from me. I, I, I know that those people exist and that they think I am a crazy person. And, um, I, so, I, yeah, can, so I, know, I don't, I, I don't think they're doing it. I don't think they're doing it for my good at all, but I'll tell you yeah. how, here's how my windows 10 laptop is set up right now. I, mm -hmm. I didn't choose Chrome as my default browser, even though that's what I use. I right. just left, left it as edge, I guess. And, so when my when I do click on links in the mail app now with um, mm -hmm. Fall Creators update, they, they it goes it. to Ed. They, but you know how seldom that happens, like twice a right. week. Right. Because mostly what I do in a browser is I go to the browser and I go to a site or make a search inside the browser of my choice. It's not that I am clicking yeah. on links things. I don't know. So Mary I think Joe, I think this is how democracy dies. Is I, you who doing? Knew? I didn't know I was just killing kinda, democracy. You just kind of <laughs> go along with the flow. Go with the flow. Have no you can laugh all you want, but when we're all running iOS 2022 <laughs> in a few years. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, as long as, as long as I install, the day Microsoft says you can't install Chrome on any version of Windows is the day I may become all Android. That, but other than that, no. There's always been I a mean, tension they've, between... They've literally taken a step in that direction. Yeah. There's always been you a know? tension between uh, ease of use and freedom. Yep. Agree. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, you know, there. I guess it's a continuum. It would yeah. be sad if ease of use ended up just eliminating freedom, although you could argue that's what happened on iOS. Yeah. But what's the nexus here, though? I mean, there's also um, a kind of an ongoing battle between open and not open. And I think it's mm -hmm. pretty fair to say that open always wins eventually. Um, and they're so. re literally so. pushing in the opposite direction of open. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. even be a case to be made that the idea of paying for software was a mistake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That you shouldn't pay for software. Uh, you should pay for services, hardware, <laughs> you support. You should pay for subscription services. <laughs> well, Microsoft <laughs> completely agrees with that. Yeah, but uh, uh, paying suddenly. for software really is what got us in this mess in the first place. So I, I'm kind I'm of an sorry. argue. I'm I'm kind of a supporter of the idea of freedom. Uh, but then you have normal people who right. just say, "Well, I'm not going to roll my own Linux just so I can use a computer. What do you oh, want me to sure. do?" For sure. For sure. Yeah. Listen, I, I, I think I've said this before in the show, and I, I've written it certainly, but I, the, the irony I, or maybe my hypocrisy or whatever you want to say about this whole situation is that I look at the future that Microsoft wants to get us to, and I may disagree with some of the details for sure, but I agree with its necessity. You know, yeah. I think uh, something uh, that is such a hairball like Windows is needs to be reined in and that we do need to arrive at this future that is essentially S mode. You know, I... I I think there are some compromises that can be made, but you know, the argument that uh, you know Terry, as a as the leader of the Windows team or the Windows team in general, or whatever, is happy to have Chrome in the store. All they have to do is make it not Chrome. <laughs> you know, that's what they have right. to do. They have to, <laughs> yeah, basically, um, use the you know make it edge. Change in other the words, they would, of course, yep. of course, they would love to have Chrome in the store because that would be more <laughs> edge users. Um, I, I just find that whole thing to be a little, um, yeah, disingenuous. Know. <laughs> yes. That, well, and I exactly. think one of the reasons you're upset about this, Paul, is that Windows was always kind of the f the not open but freer alternative. You know, yeah. we we had a devices yeah. like iOS that really mm -hmm. never promised freedom at all. It was, right. you know, do it our way and you'll be happier. Uh, yeah. Ironically, because it was Apple that did the 1984 commercial and it ended up being <laughs> Apple that was the one telling yeah. people how to run. Uh, and there are plenty of people who are very happy with that who, you know... Mm -hmm. um, but, I know, and I that that freaks me out. I mean, I I listen. There's something to be said for something that works. I, I think the the argument yeah. for iOS, if you're going to compare it to Android, is look, this thing works. The performance is consistent over time. It it's reliable. I never have to blow away these things. I blow away my Android uh, installs all the time. Um, there's just that's another way that it's like Windows. You get that performance rot thing. It's just it's a problem. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you're a non-technical person, and particularly like Leo was describing, just a normal person, yeah. uh, pushing them toward an iPhone is not necessarily a horrible thing to do. There is a horrible hubris thing with Apple that I have a tr I certainly have trouble with, <laughs> and uh, I don't like that sense of control. I, I, yeah. I do agree, you know, if you uh, bring up a new Windows 10 system, in, in our case, and it's running Edge and running the mail app and those things work for you and you happily go on your day, great. That's fantastic. Mm. But I, as the user, should also be able to go in and say, you know what? 
I want to use Chrome. You know, yeah. I, 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 that's the thing. I, I just, yeah. I, I, I'm glad you built this system. I agree with all of your goals. I still want to run Chrome. Can I run Chrome? Right. I can't. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, then I, I don't know. We're yeah. going to have a problem. Interesting. We're, this actually is uh, germane to our discussion of the Envy in just a little bit. The uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, because this is another step down that path, yeah. right? This is yeah. another way in which things get a little screwy. And actually, I, I have an incredible example of something that will not run on this laptop that I think will surprise you guys. We'll let's take that. a break, and we'll get to that. Indeed, we will. Let's take a breath. Let's just take a breath, you two. Go to your corners. <laughs> get a little, you know, just have a cup of tea. Yeah. Look at your blue walls and just relax. <laughs> and uh, we will be back in just a bit with more. Back back to the octagon for more action. But first, a word from Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Uh, Quicken Loans, number one lender in the country now, officially not just... Number one in customer satisfaction, which they have been for eight years, but number one in number of loans and the volume of loans that uh, they've written because they're the best and that, you know, people vote with their feet. And now with Rocket Mortgage, you don't even have to vote with your feet, you can vote with your fingertips. Rocket Mortgage means you don't have to go down to the bank. Nope. You don't have to put on a tire and nice dress or anything and go down and say, please, sir, may I have a home loan, please? Fill out a 20-page application, go home, then go to the attic and look through all the boxes trying to find your pay stubs from 2012 and your bank statements from 2006. None of that. Oh, by the way, when you do find those, the old days, you'd have to fax them. You have a fax machine? You'd have to fax them in. Not anymore. Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans is taking the the whole mortgage approval process into the 21st century. It's so easy, so fast. You can do it entirely online. You can do it on your phone. All you have to do is go to rocketmortgage.com slash windows. You'll answer a few simple questions. Questions you know off the top of your head. You don't have to go looking up, you know, anything. It's your name, address, birth date, social, that kind of thing. And then because they have partnerships with all the financial institutions, all you have to do is say, I give you permission. Get my bank statements for me. That's fine. Get, do, get all the in whatever you need. Rocket Mortgage then crunches the numbers based on your income and your assets and your credit. And they're going to say, these are the loans you qualify for. You choose the term, the rate, the down payment, and you're done. And all of this, about eight minutes. Eight minutes, not eight months, not eight weeks. Eight minutes. You could do this at an open house and, and get a loan approval right there and then. I love it. Rocketmortgage.com slash Windows. Refi 2. Fed raised the interest rates today. You know what that means. Now's the time to lock in your current interest rate, get a low interest rate, maybe even better than your current interest rate. Refinance. Rocketmortgage.com slash Windows. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. NMLSconsumeraccess.org number 3030. They're the biggest because they're the best. Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Rocketmortgage.com. Slash windows apply simply, understand fully, and mortgage confidently. Uh, Paul Throp, Mary Jo Foley, what are you laughing at now? What are you laughing at? Um, <laughs> I just gotta, I could just gotta thank you on Twitter for gonging Paul. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, on the one hand, I understand, you know, it's, it feels like overreaction, but on the other hand, I think Paul's not wrong in saying Microsoft has Apple envy. And oh, the totally. problem he's is, dead on, and the dead problem on. is that. They are the Apple alternative. We don't want them to become more restrictive because that's the that's where you go if you don't want to use Apple. I know. The question is, I, if they're doing this because the majority of users need need the lockdown and all that. No I mean, one needs like, mail to link to Edge. No, if agree. you've chosen right. Chrome but as your default agree. browser, that's just agree. anti. That's anti consumer. That's anti user. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, but I think I think they're starting to design for normals. Well, as they should. Instead that's of what, power users. That's yeah. why shouldn't they? Yeah, and but they part, haven't. That's in kind the past. of the maturity of the why? technology industry. I can tell you why. Because they supposedly are into this thing for creators. Creators is the new words for people who right. That's create true. anything, Gross. whether it's a document yeah. or whatever. The, the reason you use a PC is because the mobile devices are too simplistic to do things like, you know, advanced video editing or photo editing, mm. playing yeah. advanced games, doing mm-hmm. CAD cam or engineering or writing programs that run on those mobile platforms. You could uh, make Windows the is becoming though, a platform for power users. That if I mean, somebody has chosen Chrome as their default browser and then they yeah. click a link in the email, it takes them to Edge. 
that is not makes doesn't make it better for users. That's just confusing. That's yeah. like why is Edge? I don't. What is this? I, um, Mary Jo mentioned that on her computer, she's never changed the default from Edge, and that it you know of course that's, it comes up from time to time. I've actually done no the same thing uh, from time to time myself. I I I also you know I don't have an issue with it. I it's yeah. I'm not. This isn't. Always, this isn't always about me. Sometimes it is, but um, you know, like I, I can obviously handle that. <laughs> you know, sure, when Edge right. comes up, I don't mind in iOS when I click on something and it goes to it goes to Safari. It's okay, even though I use Chrome on iOS. Mm -hmm. I, you know, whatever, I get it. It's okay. It's an extra step. It, it, it's not right. a problem. But no. this isn't about me. Like I said, I mean, this is about the yeah. millions and millions of normal people who, like Leo just said, will be confused by yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, or it will be potentially confused if they're not using Edge. Um, well, and they, the normal people probably are just using Edge. Right. <laughs> are they though? Because when I look at the Edge, Edge browser or the uh, web browser, it's a tiny <laughs> fraction of the, of the users. It's, it's, it's yeah. low single digits. Yeah. I mean, that's true. Most that's Chrome true. is totally dominant. That's it the is. thing. Yeah, this is remember years and years ago, Microsoft did this thing where they uh, they came up with the idea for Microsoft Office, and the, and the way they did it, one of the things they did was they rearranged and reorganized all the toolbars for all those applications to be as similar as possible. So the idea being that if you used Word and you were really familiar with Word, that Excel would come up and you'd say, look, all the icons are in the same place. I mm -hmm. can use this too. Right. It sounds mm -hmm. so smart. By the way, that's bullshit. <laughs> that doesn't work. It That's just one of those, the many things that we yeah. think as people, it sounds like it makes sense. It literally makes no sense. Mm -hmm. When they actually studied this, what Microsoft found was that people are smarter than they thought, and people can handle different user interfaces. All of the apps don't have to look and work the same. That an app that does a very special thing, like a spreadsheet app, like Excel is, does not have to look like a word processing app. They never changed it, by the way. Excel and Word look exactly the same today. They just have different colors. Uh, green for money in Excel. And blue because writers are always sad and suicidal. <laughs> um, so I wonder really the why only it was blue. Ever. Good to know. Yeah. You know what else is yeah. blue? Facebook. Facebook, yes. Mm. Thank you for exactly the same. That kind of fits in, doesn't Speaking it? Speaking of suicidal. <laughs> oh, boy. So, so I deleted my Facebook account. I finally had Oh, it. did you really? Oh, wow. Yeah. And not so much because I want privacy, just because I want to punish the hell out of them. Yeah, mm. I am so close to doing that. I don't that. need to I, cover I've kind Facebook. I've relegated Facebook to the I, back. Yeah, I, ha I haven't been using yeah. it much anyway. I don't need to cover mm. it. Uh, I post to Instagram and sometimes I'll push it over to Facebook. That's oh, yeah, pretty I'm much it. I'm not using Instagram or WhatsApp either. I don't want to give them any You probably experience the same thing, right? You, you can go online and be infuriated. I went online today and some guy on Twitter is pissing. He's just making me so mad. But you know what makes me even madder than people I don't know is the people I do know on Facebook... <laughs> The yeah. people I should care about more than anybody, right? Yeah. With their political rants and their food photos. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's like, I just stop. <laughs> like, yeah. I just, uh, it's, it, well, it, there is a weird, infuriating quality off, to Facebook. Get off Facebook. <laughs> I mean, that, we know that. We know that Facebook uh, it has psychological impact on people. Uh, it's not good yeah. for you. So <laughs> I'm just, I'm it happy really to be strange. off it, to be It's honest. really strange. Yeah. I don't miss it. But um, yeah. Um, by the way, sorry, sorry to go for a real quick tangent, but the, one of the things about Facebook that's very upsetting too is that they, like Apple and like Microsoft, tailor the situation, tailor what you see, and don't give you what you want, what most people want, I think, which is just give me the newest stuff from everyone who's in my friends list mm -hmm. in chronological order. Just do that. They even have mm -hmm. a setting you can make that will change it to that, and it doesn't do it. <laughs> you know, and it's kind of like that takeaway of control thing. That we're going to use some algorithm, and it's probably not a, an organic al algorithm, but we're going to use some method of determining what you should see. Mm -hmm. And instead of seeing the things that have happened most recently to the people I allegedly care about the most, I see some Facebook algorithmic listing of stuff. This, I see the same stuff over and over This does tie again. in a little mm -hmm. bit to what we've been talking about, because basically we have, as uh, users, given over our control of our lives to some yeah. a third entity, a third party. And as you aptly pointed out, Mary Jo, this this third party isn't necessary, whether it's Microsoft or Facebook, is yeah. not optimizing for user happiness no. anymore. No. I mean, <laughs> except to the degree that it makes them more money. Yeah. They're optimizing right. for making more money. And that's what they're, they're a business. And But we have just ceded... I'm starting to sound like the Unabomber. We've ceded <laughs> our... Uh, or the our, EU. 
or the EU, <laughs> which are very similar, even spell alike. Very similar manifestos. Yeah. Uh, we have ceded yeah. our um, authority yep. over to mm -hmm. uh, some third party. And, you know, then know. we get upset because they say, well, this is how you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, take it back. It's, I think it's, it's time to take it to, back. It's hard to argue about this stuff without seeming like the old guy on the porch yelling at people to get off his lawn. Well, maybe you know? we are old guys in porches. I, I don't know. Maybe we are, but maybe, maybe are. old guys and old women or whatever have their we've perspective and experience yeah, to understand yeah. that mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, things have been different and new isn't always better. I don't yeah. know. I am literally that guy. I'm I'm losing it. <laughs> I don't know what's up. I, I, think it's time I am for so vacation. freaked out by this window. I don't even... <laughs> I, I don't Rum even know drinks, some palm trees for you. Bleep, put you on an island. Blurp in our chat yeah, room says, I do need to go on vacation. I miss the old days of two-seater outhouse news and barber social drama updates. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. <laughs> was life ever really like that, though? The Cracker Barrel life? Was it ever really right. like that? I think it I was. Think so. I think was it was. It? I don't, I'm yeah. not. I'm not old enough to remember that, to be honest. Skeeter and Bob sitting out in front of the gas station down in Alabama. Yeah. The guy comes in. He opens the Coke for you before you leave. Now, you know, you know using what? the thing. Like, Paul, your yours and my experience of that is from Andy Griffith's show and Hee Haw. We didn't listen. Leo, a memory is a memory. I am not gonna. Unless you're a lot older than you tell us, Paul. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, I grew up watching something even worse. You know, Gilligan's Island and I Dream of Jeannie. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, those were even more mind rotting. Uh, <clears throat> listen, I, you could learn a lot from Gilligan's Island. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of pragmatic stuff on that a lot show. a lot of important lessons life lessons let's talk about build 17 127 what do you say kids uh, yeah you, you lost your you, paul this I is have, your I'm bread and butter you can't you can't give this up this is you have to keep doing it i also Let like that in the show notes he's calling it version 1803 um which is, is interesting is it that's what they should call it <laughs> they don't you mean they haven't i mean so it was we, it was 1703 me. last spring it was 1709 last fall it's still not officially 1803 no it's it's 1803 but i mean the the consumer name has not been announced which we don't, they've leaked not, a couple times spring creators update but but so but, last spring wasn't the spring creators update right exactly I, <laughs> when, leo, when leo went to the commercial break i looked at twitter and mark hashman hashman who i think writes for pc world or world. i think it's yeah. pc world tweeted mm -hmm. it's driving me a little insane that we still don't really know whether to officially call the next feature update of windows 10 redstone 4 the spring creators update or the spring 2018 update can we have some guidance microsoft and my reply to that was my kingdom for guidance from microsoft you know <laughs> um, it is amazing that this thing is literally, literally about to be completed, and we don't have any guidance at all on what its name is. Yep. And so we should say the reason we care as journalists about this is SEO, right? Because we keep calling it Redstone 4, but at some point, that's not going to be the name. And all our references to yep. Redstone 4 are just going to be moot at that point. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so we have a selfish reason for really wanting them to come out with the uh, name. But it's I also, more, yeah, I have a more technical reason. I want to know the name of the damn thing. I've, this I know, is important me to me. It has a name. Yeah. Let's just say what it is. I, I think and if that it's 1803, Windows 10, yes. <laughs> yeah, version 1803, perfect. Will it have that number? Yeah, it will. It will, sure. that's the version. Well, then it. we're it's, just it's, calling it 1803. Screw it, Microsoft. Yeah. You've, it's 1803 because it's going to, we're not supposed to say RTM. RTM in the third month of 2018, Chris which Capicella is it's never just, coming it's, on this it's show just again. Windows I 10, I know. <laughs> to which I would say there are 18 versions of Windows 10 now. It's not just Windows 10. You know, <laughs> right. it, it's it's complicated. It's I told you the story, but I think it was Jensen Harris, the guy from Windows 8. You know, I said the charms thing. What is this? Is it a toolbar? Mm -hmm. Is it a side panel? Is it blah blah blah? He says it's not. It's none of those things. It's just the charms. I'm like, I hate this world. <laughs> it's like, it's just the charms. <laughs> Oh. Charms are charms. Oh. Like in a bowl of cereal, the charms, yeah, lucky, those charms. Lucky charms, yeah. Those. Da, 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 da. Don't so get anyway, me, don't the get new build. Anyway. Let's go back to the new build. I'm going to get down off of this rant plateau that yeah. I'm clearly on right now, I promise. Easy. Oh, Ease yourself oh, down. Gone. Ease it down. <laughs> build 17127 oh, yesterday. Oh, boy. Redstone 4. There were a couple of new features. They were kind of minor. They were around 
the look and feel of Cortana, right? The Cortana notebook and how it's going to look and how you can add access to your account so Cortana can give you traffic updates. Um, and someday this will happen for family accounts, interests, and other things too. Um, so yeah, it's almost done, but they're still adding new features. And it was interesting. I forget who asked this on Twitter yesterday, but somebody said, okay, so is this feature actually going to be in Redstone 4? Because sometimes Microsoft adds features after they've decided to build as RTM and it doesn't make it into right. the RTM. Uh, and Microsoft, uh, somebody from Microsoft said, I think it was Brandon LeBlanc said, yes, this will be in Redstone 4. Um, so yeah, that's that's it for 17271. One, no, 17127. <laughs> I'm surprised you can't keep this straight. They've only released numerology, eight builds in the last week. Numerology. <laughs> yeah. The rumor still is Redstone 4 goes RTM this week. That this they'll week. designate some build RTM. Um, it's going to be pretty soon because March is almost over. So I oh, really handle this release great. 1703 didn't come out in March. It came out in April. I mean, they don't. Yeah, that's what. Well, they so finalized RTM, it in March. Right. Yeah. And they've already said it's going to roll out in April. They've already said Sorry, that publicly. Sorry, um, What was that term used? That it, it what's in March? I, that, RTM. Some, release RTM, to RTM, Muggles. I, <laughs> release I really to like muggles. that. I'm, I'm going to stick with that one. So, um, um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> And this isn't the one with mail linking to Edge, is it? I'm sorry. I no, should, no, that's I should actually not bring this the next up. version. I shouldn't that's say anything. 1809. Let me tell you something about 1809, Leo. <laughs> that was a good year. That's back uh, back with the pot belly stove. Um, all right. So we're getting close. Yep. Accessibility and features added. Let's just blow through this stuff. They're adding accessibility yeah. features. Who cares? <laughs> um, <laughs> just, well, some people care, Paul. No, obvi obviously. More accessibility is good. Yeah. Uh, like accessibility what? is improving um, less downtime during version upgrades, meaning feature update installs. That's actually pretty huge. It's one thing I notice when I install uh, Windows 10 and Insider Builds today is it takes a really long time. Yeah. But one thing they've done is they've shifted how it installs. And so a big part of the install now occurs when you're online, meaning you can do stuff, you can write documents and send emails and stuff. And then it reboots. And where that used to be a really long process, now that's only 15 or 20 minutes. And so your your actual downtime is less than it used to be, or it will be. The actual time it takes to install a thing has not changed. They've just kind of shifted it over to where it happens. Mm. But I actually, I think that's pretty important because they're for all of the complaints around updating and forced updates and so forth, they are giving you a little bit more control over over it within the confines of we're still going to do it. Like we're going to do these feature updates twice a year. Sorry. Um, and they're making they're at least making it less painful. So, they, you know, a half step in the right direction. Uh, yeah, are they doing it like they did, uh, you know, with the boot improvements where they just put up a static screen that looks like your desktop but it's not really functional or are they are they actually going no to no it's no it's it's real so in other words you're using your computer and yeah. it's in, it's installing as much of it as it kind of like office you're... maybe this is what i, I mentioned oh, uh, like Steve click gibson. to run yeah like click to run in office i mentioned this mm. to gibson yesterday i wonder if um, it's like that we were talking about no this. it's 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 kind of the opposite of that because they're they're doing the upfront downloading of everything uh, click to uh, run and is processing after. Everything. And then they're <laughs> yeah. doing the offline install as quickly as they can. With click to run, what you get is just enough to bring the thing up. Right. And then as you're using it, it's downloading the rest in the background. Right. So it's kind of the opposite. But it's a similar, it, the idea is the same in the sense that what they want you to do is to be able to use the thing as much as possible while still updating it or installing it. Makes sense. Um, yeah. So they have to use a, a different process for each. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure, uh, you know. It's hard to imagine that that actually will work, but okay. I know. But, but <laughs> well, people, no, I, people who were installing builds this week said they thought it was working, right? No, it What happens it, when you come up against something that's still installing? It just says, well, I'll be with you in a minute. No, no. Like, in other words, like let's say you're, I'm actually working on something important, and I have to get this thing done right now, and yeah, I'm in the middle of working on it. And Windows 10 is over there doing its version upgrade thing, whatever. Um, it actually will not prompt you to reboot for quite a while. Like, you, it, you have to go look at settings, and it will say, hey click here to restart and then you can ignore that um but it's it's ready you know it will wait for you you know and That's so it nice. gives you the time to yeah uh Finish if you're not ready you're to kind of do it yeah or to do it whenever you want you like mean they you, didn't do that before they would just like restart 
<laughs> well, no, no, it's not that they would just restart. But imagine, imagine I was working on something. I was working on something, and I said, "Hey, we need to install this version of Windows." And you're like, "Oh, that's okay. I'll, I'll click okay. restart. I'll go grab lunch or something, and I'll come back." Right. right. It might not be done. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Now what they're doing is they're doing point. as much of it yeah. as possible before they even tell you Got that it, it needs to be Got rebooted. It. It. So when you actually reboot it, only a small part. So of it mostly, what happen. they're doing is downloading the, the all the files they need. Yeah, I would call the way I describe it is not installing. Like if you look right. at any of the messages in Windows that says something or Windows update that says downloading, obviously, or preparing to install. Right. Um, preparing to install to me means I am not installing anything. Yeah, I don't <laughs> so, know what that. What? Yeah, I always wondered what that means. Like, what do you? It must mean expanding uh, compressed files. Yeah. Uh, put it, uh, it. It's checking the manifest. Yeah, making sure that the pipes. <laughs> yes. Heating up the boiler. <laughs> Getting yes. ready. Getting ready. <laughs> Put new corn cobs yes. out in the outhouse. All of that. Getting ready. We're preparing. We'll be. Yes. Yeah. You're, you're a little too technical for me, but yes. <laughs> I think you're basically <laughs> saying okay, what it good. does. Um, uh, oh, I'm excited about Heath. Heath support coming. Yeah. Hef. Uh, Heath. Heif. This is, if I'm not mistaken, the it's image Apple's file thing. format that Apple added yeah. to the iPhone. It's high right? efficiency not image JPEG. format. Yep. This is important because a lot of Windows users are going to be using an iPhone yep. and their photos are going to be backed up to OneDrive and then they're going to go to look at them in photos on Windows 10 and do whatever they want to do with them. And uh, they're not going to work. No. Nope. <laughs> so mm, nope. now they will No. Nope. So that's interesting. I had no idea of the significance of Heap. Like I, I read about that and I'm like, oh, okay. Another it's a format. standard. So it's not like I they're saying, that. oh, we're going to support yeah. Apple. It's, a sta it's the next yeah. JPEG. Okay. Uh, or maybe the next. Oh yeah, but I mean, had Apple not made this the default format on the iPhone, right? They might not have moved to do this right now. It has a lot to be said for it. Uh, it stores mm -hmm. uh, more data about the original image. There's a lot to mm -hmm. be said for it. So, uh, okay. photographers, you'll be love happy. It. Happy to hear we're being plowed, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so the FedEx guy will know where the roads are. <laughs> where we're going, we don't need any roads, Paul. Right, digging them out of a ditch at the bottom of the hill. <laughs> <laughs> roads. Um. Okay, I don't know if I should bring this up. I don't. Yeah, here's I, what I'm, I'm going to say about this one. Okay. We're going to skip over <laughs> this, but I, I'm, I'm just. But the two things I want to say is okay. I am looking at Windows 10 S. Or actually, it's S mode again. S mode. S mode. I love S mode. <laughs> I will say this. Like I, I alluded to this earlier, it's actually going better than it has in the past. I I will always have blockers for me personally. Mm. Uh, because I just do specific things that I, you know, are either hard or impossible in Windows 10s. Um, one of the issues is, and this is a quirky thing for me. I'm not suggesting this means Windows 10s is worthless, but I use a Markdown editor, not Microsoft Word, to write. There are no no good Markdown editors in the store. There are some okay Markdown editors, mm -hmm. but when I copy the formatted text from those documents and I paste it into WordPress, which is how I publish things online, it removes all of the formatting. And this is true of all of the apps I've tried from the store. Yeah. That means it's completely unworkable. Right. So the solution for Paul is just write in Microsoft Word like a normal human being, you idiot, and stop complaining about something that no one else is ever going to run into. And fair enough. I'm just – but I, I just holding that up as an example of how I think we all have our one little thing that, you know, will get, get us tripped up. But I will say, you know, uh, Microsoft Edge, which I'll be writing about in a future article uh, specifically for this version – is much improved in RS4. Mm. Um, and, you know, they improve it in every version, and it's always fallen a little short for me. Um, I do feel like the addition of progressive web apps, if they get it right, which we still don't really see, uh, could put it over the top, too. And, I, I, and that's a hugely positive development. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I've complained a lot about Windows 10S. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> But I am fairly evaluating it, and I feel like it. I feel like it's uh, it's improving. I'm going to say something heretical now. Uh oh. Okay. I want to take this HP NVX2 and put it back into S. Yeah. Because one of the things I noticed, we're going to talk about Windows on ARM, and I, you know, the only reason I bought this, Paul, is because I thought you weren't getting a review yet, and I thought, oh well, I'll bite the bullet and, re and review. You know what? It. I'm not going to accept the blame on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I I, where there's so from, many but, things to like about it. Um, yeah, it's a nice machine. So um, I. And, and what about the price? Because that was the thing you didn't like about yeah. it. Yeah. So I think we need to put the price 
perspective because this is a premium device. It's not a low end. No, no, it's good screen. You know, really nice screen. laptop. It's a, it's yep. a, it's a beautiful, well made device. It's a premium device, and so nine ninety nine. So what, you, what do you get for nine ninety nine? You get four gigs of RAM, one hundred twenty gigs of storage. The version I got for review actually has eight gigs of RAM. What? And two hundred fifty six gigs of storage. I didn't even storage. see an option to buy that. That kind of makes me. I don't mad. think I don't think it's available publicly yet. <laughs> Thanks. To a me, lot. that's. That should be the one, you know, that should be the one you get. But for that price, for $9.99, an iPad with similar specs with the pencil right. and with the keyboard cover, which you get for free on the HP, right. costs, uh, depending on which size iPad you get, I want to say two to $300 more. Yeah. $9.99 can probably get you some version of the MacBook. I think the 8 gig 256 version is $12.99, which is probably what this thing sells for. So it's equivalent. Uh, Microsoft and other PC makers sell uh, low-end premium laptops in the 999 range. And so I think it falls into that category. Obviously, um, you know, for I, I think some people would say, you know, for 999, I could get like a laptop that performs really well, yada, yada, et cetera. Et cetera. Right, but this is not, that's not who this is this for. Is, this is this, a full-time LTE this is, a, yeah. this is, I don't know about your battery life. Laptop Magazine was getting about 15 hours. That kind of matches yeah, what I'm I was I'm actually getting. testing it right, literally right now. Is, yeah. It's running the test. Yeah. So I, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to, I'm going to run Windows 10S and I'm going to do this battery life test. I'm going to create a restore disk. I'm going to switch it to Pro. I'm going to install the apps that I want to use like Chrome and I'm going to nice. see how that goes. I'm nice. curious on your take Chrome that. Chrome is unusable on this. Unusable. Okay, interesting. So... It might be the four gigs of RAM, by the way. Yeah, it might be, but but uh, frankly, there nothing that is. First of all, oh, that's amazing. No, you actually saw that window draw. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> anything that's not from the Windows Store runs pretty awfully on this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, here, but remember the value proposition here is the the audience is someone who might have chosen an iPad Pro because of the battery life and the form factor someone who might have chosen a MacBook the base MacBook for right. the same reasons right? right that they need application compatibility and f having full office as opposed to iPad office is valuable to them but they don't need it like every day all day long like i need it all, I, I might need some, i don't actually use office all day every day but i might use something like office all day all, all long all day long um so I, I, it's uh, in the same way that someone would use a phone for lo do a lot of their work or an iPad to do a lot of their work, but they sometimes need that full PC experience. The the idea here is you get it in the one device. Yeah, I mean I you know I'm willing to make some sacrifices. This this is my uh, the, what is this thing? This is Doctor Racket. It's just a programming environment, an IDE I wanted to use. It's really sluggish. Even and it's a 32 bit app, by the way. It, uh, it's really yeah. sluggish. You can't run most. The other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to run a terminal, but no terminal, including Sigwin, will run in 32-bit mode. So oh, I, okay. I really can't do anything sophisticated, which is why I'm thinking it really is a 10s computer. Having said that, if you run 10s yeah. programs, if you run App Store programs, it runs fairly snappily, certainly mm -hmm. usably. I love the right. always on LTE. Now, by the way, I you know, in Laptop Magazine, they said you had to have Verizon. I'm using it with a Google Fi SIM. Oh, no, no, that's not correct. I, I'm also using, I use Project yeah. Fi, which is T-Mobile. It works perfectly and fine. And it turns yep, out, it, it, it shows up as T-Mobile. It's also, yep. by the way, very fast. So mm -hmm. it's very usable uh, in LTE mode. It, it feels like it's on Wi-Fi. Battery life's great. This is a very nice uh, screen. I think the color is excellent. It's, okay. you know... and it, By the way, even the sound is great. Like, if you play a movie yeah, on this thing... Yeah, it sounds good. The sound cranks. Like, it's yeah. really nice. So, I I don't think the price... I agree with you. I don't think the price is outrageous. Uh, and it's just that it's not really a... Well, uh, but let's, let's guys, put this in... Guys, in... or no? No, 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 no. No, no more no. than the Surface is. It's very much like... Oh. It's actually... A, it's a little worse because that kickstand Ooh. that he's... Comes down in the back, the it's not connected. Oh. It's it's only connected Sorry. with a magnet. Well, I don't. Nothing mind can that come right I off. I don't mind that this is the tablet is tablety, right? Yeah. yeah, and and that the design there is you're going to use it with a pen, which it you know includes, which is nice. Yeah, and a loop. Mm -hmm. um, no need to buy. But it. I found <laughs> the the, the uh, yeah it comes with a loop, which is awesome. But I I, I think the well, the kickstand design is um, it's more versatile than the iPad Pro. You get multiple typing mm -hmm. angle or uh, screen angles. Um, it's simpler to use. It's a little less origami. 
<laughs> you know. No, I'm, but it's, still, it's a full I, case, I which is really nice. Yeah, and it's, it by the way, device. I think an extra attractive case. I think this looks right. It looks like professional. A, a, a professional folio that you might carry around. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and and uh, you know, bring to meetings. I could totally see people using this mm -hmm. in business to take notes in meetings and so forth. It's just the higher end, sixty-four bit, you know, yeah. non-web, uh, mm -hmm. not so, app Microsoft Store stuff that really is not perfect. I talked about the funnel and and my nightmare of the street that you know goes yeah, down and nothing. Yeah, the, yeah. the horizon line comes yeah, to the front. It's funneling. Yeah. Um, this is another example of that in a way because one of the things that I discovered to my surprise, maybe ret, ret, or maybe it shouldn't have been a surprise, but. One of the apps I use that works fine in Windows 10s on Intel, yeah, does not work on this no, thing. That's because right. It's X64. That's and it's right. Adobe, right. Adobe Photoshop elements. Yep. And so it's uh, not all you, Windows Store apps, and that was a no. very big disappointment to me. You really want to? You really? This is. Yeah. I don't know. No, now you problem. should try Elements in Pro mode and see how it works. They've also work. said 64 bit 64 coming. Bit. They've said 64-bit coming, but I don't think they ever said when. And that's right? software because it's all emulation. Uh, I don't think they meant 64-bit Intel software. I think they meant 64-bit oh. ARM software. ARM. I could be ARM. wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Because well, it's emulation in 32-bit. Why wouldn't they just do a 64-bit emulation? I'm sure they're um, doing that. Mm, I'm not sure. The problem sure. is it runs I hope, like a I hope you're right. It's, it's, it's really slow. Mm. And, the, you know, an 845 is coming later this year, and it might be, I don't know if yep. that'll make a big difference. Um, I, I think the RAM thing would make the biggest difference right now. Mm -hmm. I, honestly, going from 4 to 8 would really help with Chrome. They don't sell I, I that mean, one, and I don't know what the price would yeah. be on that. Mm -hmm. but. I'm going to guess it's twelve ninety nine. It's got a decent camera. Well, that's my question. Is you know, If you really wanted this, wouldn't you just buy a Surface Pro? With an Intel. So chip. yeah, so that all right. So without remembering off the top of my head what the battery life was of a Surface Pro, it's HP sells an hours. Intel version of this device. Right. There's a Surface Pro. There is a Lenovo that looks just like this. There's right. lots of devices. Mix. Yeah. Um, uh, some of them come with LTE connectivity, including, by the way, Surface Pro. Um, hmm. It's going to be more than nine ninety nine. At a steep price. But, yeah. 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 It's more than nine ninety nine. But um, this is the trade off. And so uh, I, for me personally, yes. Not having the Qualcomm going with an Intel for that performance and for the application compatibility, frankly, is what puts those devices over the top. And if I don't get 30 days of standby and 20 whatever hours of battery life, uh, you know, I've been using a PC for a long time. I, I never got that kind of thing anyway. So, I, I mean, I love the idea know, that 10, I plug 10 hours this in of battery life. and I just go and I don't have to think about battery yeah. life at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, and I have I, to say, if you're using... Uh, you know, some of the speed issues might be tuning because the Microsoft apps all work great. I mean, I just loaded OneNote; it loaded in second. Right. Uh, the some, uh, Hello, Windows well, Hello native, works no, like that. Are. Yeah. Well, actually, what about Word, like uh, Word or Excel from the yeah, stores? Let's, How let's, do those load? Because those are x86 apps. Yeah. That are emulated. Those are not native ARM. Um, let me let me I launch believe. let me launch Word. This is from scratch. I haven't watched it before. We'll come back after a commercial break. Let's see if word is still loading. By the way, what do you call those dots? Steve Gibson wants to call them the real. See, that was pretty quick. Yeah. Let's, let's load a document from OneDrive. Um, I, I feel like this is used. This is not. So, it's a little slow. I don't know. This is. I mean, oh, can't load it. I mean, no, you know, that was just because it couldn't load it. That wasn't. Uh, it's 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 fine. It's usable is my point. Right. OK. Yeah. OK. It's a little. Uh, it's a little slow, but it's. Yeah. It's if it feels a little sluggish. Oh, these are all bad docs. That's why I'm not. I'm not having. I'll just do a new doc. You saw. You can see the screen draw, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not the end of the world, though. Um, disk access is slower because the way it's it stores this stuff. But this way, once you're in this, I, I think it'd be very similar. I have to say, drawing is not a great experience because it doesn't really keep up with the latency of the pen. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. that's kind of a negative. So let's let's go back to my rant from earlier, and, and not I won't rant again, but but think about this device Actually, in the context does. of that continuum, right? That let's desktop apps don't exist. We're, we're going to use what comes with Windows, and we're going to use store apps. And like you said, those things are actually pretty snappy. Yeah, and that's on a four gigabyte of RAM system. Yeah. Mm. Um, this is where they want to get Windows. Yeah, this is the future yeah. of Windows, right? This is the goal. Let me do an Apple and say, come to our event. 
Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, but you see, it's it's pr it's pretty. But you close. get some good slightly late width type mm -hmm. stuff, and um, yeah, you get this is the calligraphy. Yeah, it's all all of that. I I think they're using a, a nice panel. I mean, HP. One of the reasons it costs what yeah. it does is they're using a very mm -hmm. nice panel on this. Mm -hmm. It's um uh, 1920 by 1280. It's three by two, which I love. Um, some people might complain it's not a retina or pixel sense class display, but what they're saying is like, look, you're using this with cellular connectivity. People are going to stream Netflix on this thing more than they're going to write documents or edit photographs. And by the way, Netflix runs great on it. And it's going to run great and it can run it probably at 720p or whatever it is. And it's going to look great. You yeah. know, like it's, it doesn't really need to be, uh, you know, like a 4k display. Right. Not to mention the fact that I'm sure the 835 would choke on that kind of display. No, I, but it, but I mean, this is very watchable, and, yeah. and as you say, the sound is the sound is good. And sound is surprisingly good given the device. You know what the device is. It's you know yeah. You know, I think it's a. Uh, I'm playing. I watched the, part of that Star Wars movie, and it was like, actually, this this is not yeah. a terrible way to do this. Well, it's so funny because I don't know what Dolby's up to, but they're putting Dolby Atmos on. Stuff. Yeah, like on this, everything. Yeah, like, what, this you have to is, pay for that, by the way. If you, I know, <laughs> like, I'm not buying that. Yeah. It's not going to sound yeah. any better. It also comes in the Samsung S9. Like, what? Well, I think the point of the Dolby Atmos is more for um, when you have headphones because it will do like a virtual oh, headphones. It might, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. But yeah, it's not free. Which is, no, it's not free. Cracks me up. But they're really, they're really, they're really pushing it, aren't they? It's a free trial of Dolby Atmos for headphones. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And it has a headphone jack, one Type C. You know what? Oh, and by the way, it's in the right place. It's on the bottom yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike yeah. on the surface, where yeah. it's on the top right. One selling yeah. point, I think, over the surface is it has Type C charging. That's yeah. that's a huge yeah. selling point, and we'll use any Type C charger. Mm -hmm. That's um, right. It'll complain if it's you know a low. Yeah, water I mean, it's charge. not Thunderbolt three, but again, I, it, it's not that kind of device. No, the idea is that you're going to dock yeah. this thing and run two 4K displays yeah. off of it. <laughs> No, it's it's mm. you can barely run one. It, it's is, just designed. This is for, for carrying building. around, carrying to meetings, yeah. carrying to the coffee yeah. shop. Um, it's light. It's uh, you know, and it's it's sufficiently functional. I think it's literally designed to give people one less reason to even think about an iPad Pro. That's probably. I, the I case. think that's the competitive mm -hmm. rationale for it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I think that's the case. Um, so anyway, that's the HP NVX2. I'm jealous that you got one with 8 gigs of RAM. I did put a 128 gig SD, micro SD card on here, and that's my documents folder. And that's yeah, working I popped, fine. So I popped that thing out. I thought it was the SIM card. And I'm looking at the hole in it. And I'm looking at my SIM card. I'm like, I, I don't think I have an adapter that big. That's humongous. One side's the like, SIM. Oh, that's, that's a micro SD. Yeah, one side's the SD. Yeah, SIM's on the, on the right on side. The, not the left. Sims, ne Sim's right below the volume rockers. Yeah. And then the uh, SDs on the other side. I was surprised how easily that worked. I um, me too. I did change the. I ordered the, the, I ordered the SIM. The APN yeah, for, I, yeah, you I add an APN. That. It's yep. a, it's you literally add one value. This is all you need. We'll, we'll yeah. walks you through it. Yeah, it worked t two seconds. My apologies. It was, it was I don't the understand. No, no, I'm not talking to that Google. <laughs> the other <laughs> Google. The other See, one. It wouldn't be an episode of any podcast these days if you didn't <laughs> fire off some digital assistant by mistake, right? It's impossible to avoid. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I have, you know, I, you have 30 days or something to return it. I could, I mm -hmm. saved the box. I could still return it. Although it looks like a yeah. rat ate the corner of the box, but the insides are. Right. And this, <laughs> well, yeah, I think they rushed, still doesn't do the packaging. But, they rushed uh, this out because yeah. they, you know, there's stuff like loose in the box, mm -hmm. but. Sure. Um, but it's really actually quite nicely designed. I think it's a very nice... Uh, I, it, it's a it's beautiful a laptop. Like you said, it, no one would uh, be embarrassed by that. In fact, no. they'd be proud to carry it around. I take it to it's meetings. Yeah, device. I take it to all my meetings. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's an executive an laptop. It's an executive kind of laptop is what it is. Yeah. 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 All right. The HP NVX2. But the big I'll do a lot of Windows I'll, I'll News... Write, I'll be... Huh? What I'll be writing up a bunch of stuff about it over time. Good. I, okay. I've got a bunch of Good. stuff to tell. Now we're going to shut up because it's time for Mary Jane to... Sh Mary Jane. How did Mary I get bolded <laughs> in the notes? Mary Jo to shine. Did you just add Guys, that? Guys, we haven't, we haven't talked about the biggest Windows news of the week yet. It's the which biggest is like, Windows news of the week. We're kind of burying the lead here. We've talked about a lot of other small updates to <laughs> Windows on the desktop. But right. guess what else came out this week? What? The first test build of Windows Server 2019. Woo! Woo! They still make that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, yes, they do. <laughs> this, well, this is what the last version was 2016. 16, okay. Yep. So later this year, probably around October, Microsoft's going to roll out Windows Server 2019, which is the on-premises version of Windows Server. And um, they're letting insiders do tests of it, uh, just like they do with the what they call semi-annual channel updates, which are those twice yearly feature updates we've been talking about. Like Redstone 4 and 5 are called semi-annual channel because they come out twice a year. Um, this is the the going to be the latest, I'm going to use some acronyms here, LTSC version, long-term servicing channel. So here's a simple way to think about this. If you are a Windows Server user and you run Windows Server so that you can run things like SharePoint, Exchange, um, all the mission critical apps that you have in your organization. This is the version of Windows Server you care about. You don't care about the uh, the uh, semi-annual channel version. The semi-annual channel version is for people who want to test out the latest features, but it's only supported for 18 months and it's not where you're going to put your mission critical apps. This version that went into test this week is the one you care about. So here's a couple things that are in it are going to be added to it at least before it comes out. One of them, Windows Subsystem for Linux gets added. Leo, Windows Server is getting Windows Subsystem for Linux. Wait, this wasn't, I thought that this wasn't in server before? It was in the, um, what do you call it? So, um, the semi-annual oh, channel. the semi-annual, okay. Right. Windows huh. Defender Advanced Threat Protection Service gets built in to Windows Server 2019. Yeah. Linux containers can run on Windows Server 2019. Kubernetes management of Windows Server 2019 hosts and Project Honolulu, which is the graphical management tool that Microsoft's been testing for Windows Server, is going to be work on that and also manage new hybrid scenarios as of Windows Server 2019. So there are a lot of new features coming to this. But the thing is, all these features, as Paul just noted, have already been previewed or are in the midst of being previewed in the semi-annual channel update. So it may not sound brand new, but if you're an on-premises user, these are new. Uh, first test build this week, simultaneous with the first test build of the semi-annual channel release of Windows Server 1809. Those two things are gonna arrive together in the fall along with Redstone 5. Big news, mm. big. What else happens in the fall that might be tied to the release of this product? Microsoft Ignite. Uh, yes, Ignite. Correct. Very, very good. September. That's yeah. when it should RTM. Release to muggles. <laughs> no, it's uh, for a server. It's released to ministrators. Yeah, there. Uh, that's good. Release <laughs> to ministrators. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Apost ministers. Little apostrophe on the beginning. Ministers. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Mins. I released it. Mins. Release to minions. Uh yeah, somebody said release to minions. I kinda like that. Yeah. But I'm still released to muggles. Even though there are yeah. no muggles using Windows Server twenty nineteen. <laughs> Probably not. No, you're not a muggle for using that. <laughs> That's true. Can it, you can do can you do in Windows Server, you can do everything you do in regular Windows plus, right? Isn't that the way it works? Or no? Well, I mean, I, mean you, I could run Microsoft Office on it, right? Or no? You do have the desktop experience in yeah. server on-prem. Okay. So. Does it come with those silly games by default? <laughs> or do I have to install yeah. it manually? Yeah, Candy Crush comes with every server installation. <laughs> I just, I, that's another thing, by the way. That path that you're going down. Yeah. Yeah. That's That really, I just, every yeah, time I get a business machine, ways. it has Candy Crush Soda. I know. Add on yeah, a new ThinkPad X1 Carbon, same thing. You know, yep. it's like this is. Yep. Let's just see. Here's the here's the ThinkPad X1 third generation Yoga. Let's just let's just open it up and see, Paul. Yeah, see what kind of Candy Crush <laughs> Disney silliness is pre-installed in this thing. <laughs> the yes. thing I hate installed are all the sports things, like NFL app, NBA app. So I'm like, okay, oh, why do I get? Let's those? see. You know, if you're a big big <laughs> shot like business, they know man, what you don't like, and you spent three thousand yeah. dollars on a nice. Business yeah. machine from Lenovo ThinkPad. You must be a Minecraft, Microsoft Solitaire, Candy Crush Soda. What is this? Disney? What? Yep. What is this? What is this thing? What is that? Uh, it's Magic something. Or Bubble Witch Three Saga. Bubble Witch. God, I'm a Bubble Witch for fan. Tapping on that now, it's installing. Oh no, it's no, no. <laughs> and then 
the ads, and then, oh yeah, Bubble Witch 3 Saga. It's installing. I don't want it. I know. Oh, Candy Crush Soda Saga. Yeah, it's installing. So if you, you accidentally tap it. So Come on, way, this is a um, business machine. Lo looking at the screen, that, that Lenovo L down in the corner, that's the Lenovo software updater app, which is uh, really well done. In fact, I do I think like they're it, the, yeah. yeah. It's a store app. So th right. they actually have a, they shift an it to the store. That, yeah. Yeah. So on the HP, I haven't figured out how they're going to do software updating because their app was, is called, I think it's just called Software Update or Software Updater. That's a desktop app, and it's not available on that HP Envy. So I'm kind of curious where HP users are going to get updates from. This thing I don't like, though. It puts a big battery. I accidentally checked that. I can, oh, you can, yeah, you I can, can turn that off. Yeah, You can swap the uh, control updates, and function key. Uh, including Windows updates and Lenovo updates are all in uh, in here. Oh, Bubble Witch yeah. Saga 3 just got installed. Let's let's check it out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm a big shot businessman with my new Lenovo uh, well, Yoga. I want to play. I You have to agree, unfortunately. Oh, I have to, um, I have to agree. Whoop. <laughs> I love these big whoop, jelly buttons. I consent. I consent to you taking all my information. Oh, it's just like a phone app with a background image. They didn't even bother filling the wings. <laughs> Come on. That's you put tough. a phone app on my Lenovo Yoga. For crying Well, out. at least it wasn't expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is a review mm, unit, so tough. you're right. It wasn't. But mm -hmm. look, can you do this? I hope I can do this. Yeah. I hope that's... I hope that's legal. Really, by the way, great for playing Bubble Witch Saga 3. <laughs> Made for it. Oh, I was all impressed by how fast that loaded. That wasn't the HP, though. <laughs> was, oh, no, no, no. That was no, a real is, computer. This was a $3,000 <laughs> yeah. uh, ThinkPad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, uh, of course. You know, Yoga, the new third generation one, which I now have greasy finger marks on. It's the only thing I don't <laughs> like about that soft touch black is it. Yeah. Really picks up the fingerprints. Smudge tastic. Smudge tastic. Uh, wunderbar. Wunderlist <laughs> from the Wunder Kids is now yeah. Wunder no more. So I, I had a, a blogger I know from Germany contact me about this Wunderlist Microsoft to do thing. And he said, Hey, did you see that the developer of Wunderlist kind of explains some of the reason why this stuff is going so slow? And I said, No. So he kind of he pushed me toward the stuff. I I handed it off to Brad because Brad has a real bee in his bonnet over this story. He's really burned by all of Microsoft's to do apps and kind of how silly that has gotten. So he ended, he ended up writing it up. But the the short version is that Microsoft bought Wonderlist. The idea was they they were going to kill it and push it into Microsoft to do. Microsoft to do hasn't been updated since I don't know the Civil War or I don't know, maybe the Korean War. It's been a long time, but. Um, you know, what's taking so long? And I guess apparently what's taking so long is Wonderlist was built on AWS. And obviously Microsoft doesn't want that. Yes. So they've been trying to port it over to Azure. And this is taking a lot longer than they thought it was going to. So it's they been kind of a problem with Hotmail, didn't they, when they acquired Hotmail? That's exactly what I thought. Skype, of. Exactly. Right? And Skype. Hotmail. Yeah. Yeah, same, yeah. Same thing. So Hotmail was based on FreeBSD. Microsoft, I think they announced very early on, we're going to push this thing right onto Exchange or whatever it was at the time. And <laughs> three years later, uh, that still hadn't happened. But um, yeah, and Skype, uh, well, Skype, they changed the infrastructure. Remember, Skype was peer to peer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, they, they that made tons of sense back yeah. in the 1800s or whatever. But um, <laughs> Cloud Era, that's not working out. So they had to. Actually, I don't know if that was an server. improvement. I liked the old Skype. Um, I think a lot of people model. did, actually. Yeah. 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 So if you had two people with a killer connection, uh, right. you had rock which, solid connectivity. Which is was awesome. why we used Skype. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You can see. What, yeah. Um, <clears throat> LinkedIn <laughs> <laughs> has a Halloween costume, apparently. This is another. This has got to be a Paul Thoreau. You know, I. I I hope we get to the point where we can have Mahedi on the show. Um, he's yeah. very, he's a young guy and he's a very private guy. And uh, he's, I, I don't know. I mean, I think if he were to appear in a podcast, he'd be like one of those 60-minute things where the person doesn't want to betray their... <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, <laughs> like, like, you know, their yeah. yeah. They've got the mm -hmm. Charlie Brown parent yeah. voice going. Um, <laughs> but, it's, but in the same way that, you know, I get overly excited about this Windows stuff. You know, Brad has like the mobile app stuff for some reason. Brad, this is bad, Brad's big thing. LinkedIn and this in the Snap chat stuff is like Mahedi, and maybe it's a generational thing. I don't know. It's funny, but he is really burned about it. <laughs> like Snapchat changed the UI, and he's freaking out. 
And then LinkedIn this week, I guess, added um, <laughs> three, three filters. And they're basically turning... Wait a minute. It, like, they, they added filters? Yes, to the mobile app for LinkedIn. What? So it's, you know, it's one of those slippery slope things. Like they're trying to go down the path of... Um, <sighs> You know that what what the kids are doing, Leo. You gotta you gotta bring the kids in. The, you know, LinkedIn was the last place, the yeah. last social network I felt like I could go to, where I wouldn't be bombarded by crap. Yeah, that's how I felt about Windows. Because right? it's business focused. <laughs> that's how I felt about Windows. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm not kidding. It's you know, yeah, it's hard. It's Basically, hard when you see stuff like this. Is life in the 21st century? We're bombarded by crap. They think people want yeah. this, right? Like when they changed Skype, they were like, everybody wants it to have stickers. I'm like, do they? <laughs> okay. Yeah, do they? Yeah, sprinkles maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Stick yeah. this emoji stuff is the worst thing. It's Mary Jo has turned into a child. You should see <laughs> what. I did see the you should see me like on Skype. I'm like, just like animated every... Egyptian hieroglyphs. Every she sends me these like little catapulting uh, headshot <laughs> and a witch stirring a cauldron. I don't even know what she's talking about anymore. A hedgehog, nice. the dancing leprechaun. You've seen them all. Yep. And you'll see yeah, many it's like more. We've gone back. It's like we're in junior high school all of a sudden. <laughs> wow. And do you use yep. those with Skype, Mary Jo? Yeah, the yeah. Skype. I'm going to start sending you LinkedIn uh LinkedIn yeah, filters. LinkedIn, filters. I, don't, I don't use so the mobile it, LinkedIn it, it, app. LinkedIn adopted the sepia, uh, sepia folder. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, what do you call it? I, filter. I, use, I use LinkedIn in a browser. I think I, yeah. I like it way more it's than how, I like the app. Yeah, business people use it to hire people to stay in exactly. touch, to network, yep. yeah. not to send selfies well, of their. Oh, yeah. No. I, I, guys, Whatever. listen. I. <laughs> <laughs> This is how democracy yeah. falls. This is it. It's over. <laughs> I'm with you now. I'm with you now, Paul. <laughs> oh, boy. It's the end of the world as oh, we wow. know it. Yep. Um, all right. Let's see. I think we are ready to get to the back of the book. So why don't we take a little break? Uh, well, I'm going to take a little time out for Bubble Witch Saga. But... Uh, <laughs> We are going to hear from our sponsors, and then we will take a little break for your picks of the week, your beer of the week, your enterprise pick, all of that stuff. But first, a word from IT Pro TV. Uh, Tim and Don are coming out. I'm going to see them soon. They're coming out for RSA as they do every year. They do great coverage of RSA. IT Pro TV is, how can I describe this? If you think about Twit and the shows we do, and then you multiply it by five. Five studios, 125 hours of content every week. And then you say it's the geekiest content because it's content for IT professionals. It's all about IT. Whether you're looking to get the certs to get your first job in IT. And it really, these guys came from IT training background. So that was the initial idea. But now, you know, whole IT teams sign up for IT Pro TV so they can get, you know, off-site training without going off-site. They can, they, you know, staff can go to, you know, have a lunch break and be watching, you know, how to use uh, Kali Linux or how to set up a Windows. They'll have Windows Server 2019. The minute it's out, that's where you'll get all that information. 125 new hours every week and then 3,300 on-demand hours. Binge-worthy, entertaining, excellent training. In every aspect of IT, certified ethical hacker, you know, there are one million open IT security jobs in the United States. One million. Get that CEH or learn how to use Kali Linux or AWS. Get your ITIL or ISC squared certs. You can go right in there and say, I'm an IT professional and I'm a security expert. That actually, if you were going to pick one area, that would be a great one. But no matter what area, IT Pro TV has courses for you. And for teams, they have a team portal that lets you track your team's results both as a whole and by individuals. You can uh, give training assignments, see individual analytics, logins, viewing time, video downloads, completion traction, tracking. So you always know. Uh, you know, always know exactly uh, how your team is doing. It's a really great way to keep a team up to date. So whether you're looking to start your new career in IT or you're a seasoned professional or you've got a team and you're looking on engaging ways to keep them up to date, you got to know about IT Pro TV. Effective, entertaining IT training. There's nothing like it in the world. It's the best. ITPro.tv 
slash WW. You can learn more about their team solution. You can request a free team trial. And if you're an individual, you can sign up for the individual monthly membership there. Actually, it starts with a seven-day free trial. So it gives you a week <clears throat> to really knock yourself out and watch as much as you can. Binge on it. ITPro.tv slash WW. And, but use the offer code WW30, WW30, because if you decide to stick around, if you decide to sign up, 30% off the life of your subscription, as long as you remain active, forever. Forever. 30% off for the lifetime of your active subscription. There are premium subscriptions, too. They're a little more expensive, but you get more. You get virtual labs. So, for instance, when Windows uh, Server 2019 comes out, you won't have to have it. You could do it in a HTML5 browser. Actually, you know what? You could run it on the HP XL. You go, to, go there in Edge. I'm sorry, the NVX2, uh, whatever it was. Yeah, the NVX2. Go on Edge, and it would run full speed in the browser because it's running off of their remote server. They've got the Transcender practice exams. I, lo I love playing with servers on the uh, virtual labs because you, you, if you screw something up, which I have, you just go, okay, and close the window. <laughs> well, see you later. Good luck. So the pro subscriptions, premium subscriptions, which are normally eight fifty seven a year, which is I still think a very good deal, but you get the WW thirty code, you pay only six hundred dollars a year. Compare that to an IT school or even just buying materials to study. This is it, and you you get the practice exams too, the transcendent practice exams. ITPro.tv slash WW use the code WW thirty flexible training, binge worthy content, ROI proven, IT Pro. Dot TV. We thank them so much for their support. 90,000 members strong now, and I think a lot of them come from Windows Weekly and, and our other shows. All right, let's uh, kick out or kick off, kick out the jams and kick off <laughs> the back of the book. Pump we, up the jams. Pump Leo. up the jams <laughs> with Pump G. <laughs> All the kids are playing it. Actually, it's Fortnite, like I just sort got of a... Fortnite for iOS, which is really fun. I love Fortnite. Yeah, my, my son was home over the week uh, over the weekend, and as part of an intermittent series called Paul Occasionally Plays Games That Are Not Called Call of Duty, <laughs> I asked him, <clears throat> you know, people have been kind of pressuring me to try PUBG again and again, and I, on you Xbox, don't like it. one, I don't, I th the performance is terrible. I think the app is kind of not great, but he said, you should try Fortnite, you know? Yeah. And he's also a big um, uh, Overwatch fan. And, uh, Fortnite's and very Overwatchy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Fortnite is um, Fortnite and Overwatch is similar in that they're kind of cartoony, but actually, those kind of graphics make tons of sense for yes. multiplayer because yes. it speeds up the action, which yes. is what you're looking for. Yes. And uh, by the way, Fortnite is free. I know. Um, it's so, great. I mean, if you're curious about what this PUBG thing's all about, my God, get to get Fortnite. It's the same exact thing. It's it's you know it runs better. Um, it's so actually I more kind fun. Of I played PUBG and uh, Fortnite lets you build things. You can build forts yeah. and. Yep, I, I just, yep. I, I really just a, think it's a, it's a, actually a lot of fun. I and have it, never made it out of the '60s, uh, you know, as far as oh, my no, ranking neither. or whatever. Well, that's the um, other thing I love about Fortnite. When you get killed, you then watch the person who killed you. Yeah. And then if they get killed, you watch the person that killed them, and it goes right. all the way up to the end. Right. So you're actually watching the game from the perspective of the winner. It's really yep. fun. It's really yeah. fun. I like that. Yeah, part. somebody on, on Twitter today was kind of saying, I don't understand, like, this whole notion of watching video games. And oh, I said, no, well, do fun. you understand the notion of watching sports? I mean, yeah. it's it's, I, I was it's kind of a huge... That, but I, it's Fortnite's big. fun to watch. I actually enjoy watching because yeah. I do get killed right away. But, uh, but it's fun to watch. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I went back to Call of Duty. But th those <laughs> things are out there. So <laughs> just good to know about. Um, the other thing is... Uh, through the 24th, I think it is, the Huawei uh, Mate 10 Pro, which is their flagship and available now in the United States, is uh, $100 off. So it's $700. This is actually a tremendous deal for this class of device. Um, I thought my review was going to be up by now. I've been kind of uh, slagging off on that. But um, this is a, a flagship class phone. It's got a dual camera system, high-end specs, uh, glass body, et cetera, et cetera. It's... Um, uh, 4,000 milliamp hour battery. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's got the biggest battery uh, there nice. is. I mean, uh, I think the Pixel 2XL is a 3,500 yeah, milliamp so battery. Samsung. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, it's something to look at. I, 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 you know, if you don't you don't want to spend you know a thousand bucks on a phone, but you want a high end phone, six gigs of RAM and 120 gigs of internal storage. That's it's right up there. It's got a well, it's a 1080p display, like but it's it? 2160 by 1080p. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, it's I good fun. one, maybe, huh? My review will be up this week. Um, it's just a question of exactly what. Do you when, like it better it than the uh, S9? No, but it's cheaper than the S9. And right. the thing is, it's not it's not exactly pure Android, but it's much closer to pure Android than Samsung's thing. Ah. And of course, you can replace the launcher anyway if you want. But it's 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 close enough to pure Android that to me, it's completely not objectionable. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a nice device. Comes in beautiful colors if you want, like a blue one. Although the diamond black is like four hundred bucks more, five hundred bucks more. Oh boy! Yeah, look at that thing. <laughs> hmm. I don't know why. I guess because it's yeah, I don't either. Because it has that nice wallpaper. Yeah, it's all about the <laughs> wallpaper. It doesn't look that different. <clears throat> yeah, and okay. So I have three app picks. Um, one of these just happened right before we started the show. But Pocket Cast, which is my favorite po uh, podcast application is currently available in Android and iOS and native app form, and then is a web app version. And according to the company that makes it, they have no plans to release native versions for Mac or Windows. But today they released a beta version, a Pocket Cast for Windows 10, so it's available through the Microsoft Yay. Store. When I ran the thing and looked at it, I realized this is the web app. It's the web app, mm -hmm. but it's running you know, through the WinStore. And I thought, you know, this is interesting. And I don't know the answer to this question, but this thing is either a hosted web app, which is the old-fashioned way of doing these things in the store, or it could be a Ooh, progressive web app. Um, it does support um, downloading capabilities, which I didn't think it did at first, meaning that you can download episodes uh, for listening or watching offline. So We love Pocket Casts. It's a great way to listen to Windows Weekly. Yeah, it's what I use. The only thing I will say to Pocket Casts, uh, to the app for you to understand, is that it's a paid app, right? It's not free. So you, if you want to use it on iOS or Android or the web, you actually have to pay for it on each platform separately. Oh. Um, it's working for me just fine. I don't know how it would work if I didn't pay for it. But since it's the web app, I'm going to guess and say you pay for the web app to get it. You know, I'm not, I don't know. I, I Someone should try that and let me know how Pocket Cast works from the store if you don't already pay for do it. it. Because, it may, uh, I pay, well, but I do pay for it, so... Yeah, so it's kind of hard to test. You know, I don't yeah. know how that works. And they haven't really officially announced it. Like, it just appeared in the show. So I don't have any... I'm uh, sorry, in the store. Right. So I don't have any additional information. It's my favorite. Um, yeah, it's, it's... I love Pocket Cast. Mm -hmm. So I use... I literally use Pocket Cast every single day. Shifty um, Jelly. <laughs> yeah, a weird kind of company name, but yeah. It's He's a great app. They're Australian, yeah. I think... I could be wrong. I think this is the only thing they make, isn't it? Pocket Cast? As far as I know, I yeah. A uh, um, couple of Microsoft apps, too. So Microsoft Edge has been out on iOS, I want to say, since last fall, probably. Uh, this past week, it became available on the iPad. So you, instead of getting the little goofy iPhone app in a window, you, it's full screen. It works exactly as you'd expect. So if you are using Edge on Windows 10 and want to use it on mobile, obviously you want to use this. It works really. It looks great. works great. Really nice. And Microsoft has finally taken the new Outlook.com out of beta, sort of. <laughs> so uh, before there was a little beta switch you could get into. I think it in very in the very early days you probably had to be opted into it to even get into the program. Um, the way it works now is the mail experience is being deployed to people. You'll get it automatically at some point. You can switch over to now if you want. Uh, to, uh, you can switch over to now if you want. Um, but even if you do, or even if you get it automatically, the calendar and people experiences, which are the other two-thirds of Outlook.com, are still in preview. So you have to actually flip the beta switch regardless to see those because otherwise you'll see the old versions. Uh, but this is a nice-looking app. In fact, I look at this thing and I think to myself, we were talking about the Mail app and how I, I would never personally use that thing. I would use this thing, and I would love for this thing to be available through the store as a progressive web app. I would love to use Outlook.com as my mail client. This is a beautiful application. So... Um, if you are using Hotmail or whatever, you know, Outlook.com, uh, um, be sure to check this out. It's really, it's on the web, obviously. It's really, really, really nice. Nice. All right, Mary Jo Foley, time for your enterprise pick of the week. Okay. Um, oh, I'm Sriracha keep... and a Sriracha appearance. I'm trying to keep him to the side. Just cover him up. Little <laughs> Fireman Brad will take over from here. No yeah. problem, man. Put a little fireman hat um, on that cat. Yeah, I know. That was Same cute. hair color. Yeah. Um, my enterprise pick of the week, first one, is um, Dynamics 365 related. So Dynamics 365 is Microsoft's ERP and CRM product line. So today, Microsoft announced what they call their spring update. Here we go with spring again, right? Um, spring 18 update is how they refer to this. And what this is is a refresh of their entire 
set of apps that comprise Dynamics 365. So it's a refresh on sales, customer service, field, uh, field service, project service, talent, retail. Every single app is going to get an update. Um, these are going to be available starting in April, we think. And there's a Microsoft webcast where they're going to go into more detail about the different refreshes that they have going on on March 28th. So if you are a Dynamics user, you probably want to tune into that because the release notes for this are over 200 pages. Mm. Yeah. It's because they're refreshing the entire product family. The most interesting part to me of the refresh, though, is some really obscure, more technical part that'll appeal to developers. So um, Microsoft, at underneath their whole Dynamics platform, has something called the Common Data Service. And what they're going to do is open up the common data service so that it works with Power BI and analytics um, and also uh, with apps so that you can take the entities that you store in Power, I'm sorry, in CDS and actually use them across the product family and integrate them more directly with Office 365. I'm not even going to try to explain it further than that. I think you should look at the release notes and watch the webcast to get more. As always, watch the webcast. Watch the webcast. Words to the wise. <laughs> uh, and your Windows documentation is no longer where you left it. Yeah. So this is a really important pick, Enterprise Pick 2, for anybody who's an IT pro. Um, Microsoft has been moving all their TechNet documentation over to Docs, Microsoft Docs. And right now they're in the midst of taking away all the Windows 7, 8, Server 2012... Uh. Um, 2008, 2003 documentation off of TechNet so that even if you use a search engine, you're not going to be able to find this stuff. But luckily, there is a URL that you can go to. Thanks, Ned Pyle, who is providing this. docs.microsoft.com slash en hyphen us previous versions slash windows. And I'll tweet that one out and it'll be in the show notes. But if you use this URL, you'll be able to find all that prior documentation that they're taking offline um, and be able to search it inside of that site. Nice. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You could leave documentation. I can understand why you want to want to develop for uh, or update older versions, but leave the documentation. I'm I coming. know. Yeah. So there, you know, this whole move. Of, it's good that they're moving stuff to docs.microsoft.com mm -hmm. because the documentation site is great there and it's got a lot of really great resources there. But for all the old TechNet stuff, people are like, okay, so where did that go? <laughs> oh, well, yeah. I guess. I think I need a beer after all this. Me too. Wow. So I don't I don't make a lot of beer picks like the one I'm going to make today, but this I had at a recent beer tasting, and I remembered how great it is. It's called Orval, and it's a, a Trappist beer from Brasserie Orval in Belgium. Um, this beer is kind of identified as a Belgian pale, but it's almost like its own style because of the unique yeast strain that they use in making it. So it doesn't really taste like anything else I've ever tasted but it's really a mellow beer. It's like really smooth, easy drinking and tasty. And interestingly, you can cellar this for a long time. And I had some of the older vintages from like the early 2000s and they were excellent. Um, so if you ever see it, it's got a very, I put a picture, a uh, link with a picture of the bottle in it. And it's pretty, yeah. Yeah, the bottle is very unique too. And you can find it pretty readily in a lot of beer shops um, and even bars. A lot of them still have Orval, especially I, if you're in I Europe. Just ask one question about your review of this product. Yes. Did you just use the term seller as a verb? I did. You can sell it. Seller it. It's been sellered. You can seller it. <laughs> just, just checking. Okay. Any word be, can become a verb, Paul. <laughs> Ver you just verbify verb. it. You verbify do. it. Yeah. You've been verbified. Any word can be verbified. Have verb you ever had Paul, Orval? You know that. <laughs> have, have either of you guys ever no, had Orval? I want an Orval. It's, I want to go to no, It's really good. That sounds great. It's good. Pa I, Paul, if you were still drinking beer, would love this beer. <sighs> I tried to find some. When we were in Belgium uh, last year, I tried to drink some as much beer as I could, but <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, see, I should have yeah. asked you, Orval. That's you got to yeah. go to the you got to go to the Abbey and, and drink it at the source. 
Okay. That would they be the a, best. Yeah, they have a spring yeah. there that just beer. Oh comes man, that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, it's funny. I, I see it around New York every once in a while, like in bars, um, oh, so beer shops, it's it. around. Yeah. Cool. So it just doesn't taste like anything else. It's just very unique. It's really mellow, but it has a really nice taste. Like somebody said who was drinking it with me, like, you know, you could just sit in front of a fire and, re- ah. and sip this and just relax. I want some And it's more. not because oh. it's high alcohol. It's like 6%, but nice. easy, easy drinking. I want some. It's good. Mary Jo Foley. All about Microsoft.com. That's where she hangs her hat, the ZDNet blog, and she's working hard to file every minute of the day. Just boom, <laughs> boom, boom. We're not drinking Orval. We're not drinking Orval. <laughs> You'll find her there. You can tell when she has had Orval, though. Just you can. <laughs> yes, you can. The, <laughs> the stories the get a little spicier. <laughs> the words meander. Uh, Paul Thorat, he's at Thorat.com. His books are at leanpub.com. And together they make the Windows Weekly Team every uh, Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. If you want to stop by, watch us do it live. If you do that, you should join the uh, chat room. That's where the interactivity happens, irc.twit.tv. And already they're complaining about Mary Jo's grammar. So... What? Very so unique. I object. I object. Guys. Look it up. <laughs> really? That's a canard? I, I believe it's it's a word. I would that never pe- question. People it. in the Actually, beer industry use it. Oh, cellaring? The one, the no, one. I've heard it. Uh, we hear it up here in the wine country, cellaring. Mary yeah. Jo is not a fan of the Oxford comma. I am this not. This is potentially oh. the biggest rift in our relationship <laughs> of all time. What happened? You like the Oxford comma? You use it's, it? Necessary. It's Everybody does. It's, it's archaic. Oh, it's required. God. Guys, you don't need it. You don't need you it. That's where choice. That's where choice needs to be taken away. No, <laughs> no dangling commas or lack of it. commas. You probably double space after a period. Still, I do, do you? too. Yeah, that's because it's a <laughs> typewriter thing. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> that one I could give in on. It's but, an affront uh, to our democracy. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. It's over. It's over. Game over, You man. can't handle democracy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. right, let's. I'm going to call it right here. One eleven seventeen. That's when the thing went off the You're rails. Like, enough is enough. It's <laughs> uh, come on by and uh, join us live if you can't. On-demand audio and video available at twit.tv slash WW or wherever you subscribe, including Pocket Casts. Make sure you subscribe. And then you get audio or video, and you'll get it each week at the minute it's available, and that way you won't miss a minute of Windows Weekly. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye.